What's up guys? Anthony here with Empire Music. Uh, nuts and Bolts feature, we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite subject matters, maybe even more so than basses, uh, effects pedals. Uh, kind of a bass centric take on effects pedals. And I was kind of classified in two different ways, something you could really use on just about any gig and something that you could you know, make a whole lot of noise with. We're not going to focus too much on the, uh, the weird outer stuff today, stuff that um, if you're not into effects, you'll find it very useful on just about any gig. Um, the first pedal, though, is not necessarily a gig pedal. What I would recommend anyone for their first pedal, um, or if you don't own one, get one, it's going to be a looping pedal. Nice shot of that. And uh, so that's the Electro Harmonix 360 looper. Very small, very compact, very concise, and it's, uh, it's very user friendly. The reason I suggest that as a first pedal um, is because what it allows you to do functionality wise at home or pre gig if you're the first one there and you just want to kind of warm up, it allows you to not just you know, have your guitar or bass be the only instrument that's happening. It allows you to, you could tap on your guitar or, or bass and make a rhythmic loop. Um, you can do something uh, chordal and play over it. You can start stacking lines, um, whether they're single note lines or like I said, chords. Um, if you're trying to write a tune, if you're trying to write a passage, if you're trying to work on any particular section of a tune, um, it really allows you to do a lot of that work on your own, which is great. So from a practice standpoint, from a learning perspective, um, I think a looping pedal is the single most important pedal that anyone should get into, regardless of what instrument you play. Um, it, 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 it pays dividends um, from a practicing perspective. You might not use it too much on a gig though. Uh, sometimes you can layer some like atmospheric type loops and kind of help fill up if you're playing in a trio. I remember my first ever real experience with a looper, I had an old Boss DD5. I was playing back in, geez, probably around 2001, 2002, and that allows you to sample two seconds of whatever you wanted. And I was playing in the trio at the time, and I just remember looping like a low A and playing over top of that, like that was just kind of going underneath the band, but I was able to play on top of that and like create kind of a bass line on top of that low A. And it just filled up the sound a lot. We all kind of really got engaged with it and we were in kind of an improvisational section. I remember that very vividly as being kind of a, 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 a um, you know, a light bulb moment where it was like, oh wow, these are very functional. And that was on a gig. So actually, you know, it can work, but if you're looping something rhythmic, you probably don't want to do that because you'll drive your drummer insane, but I digress. So very important pedal, looping pedal. Uh, for us bass players, I think the first kind of gigable pedal we should get into would be an overdrive or a fuzz. Close up again, here we go. Making it hard on them. And, um, but yeah, uh, an overdrive or a fuzz pedal is very useful because regardless of what style of music, it's not just associated with rock or heavy metal, something like that. You can get into a lot of, of tunes where just having fuzz or overdrive or any type of dirt pedal on there is going to sound really cool for any section or for a particular tune. Try it out, experiment with it. Another very useful option for it is in this, in this age of digital amps with us bass players, we use them a lot. Um, this can warm your, your sound up to kind of get that old tube driven sort of tone. You, you, put the, uh, you put the drive or the gain down pretty low and you just get a little bit of saturation on there, just a little bit of warmth, a little bit of old kind of uh, warmth and kind of fuzziness you get on, on the tone. So it doesn't have to be full bore in your face distortion. Very useful there, very versatile. Uh, second one, gigable envelope filter. Um, if you're playing anything, there we go. If we're playing anything, I hate just to box it in, but if you're playing something kind of funky, something kind of has a nice groove to it, an envelope filter can be very, very useful. Uh, check out some like, you know, obviously Flea and a lot of other players have made envelope filters pretty prevalent in music. Um, and you can have slow filter sweeps too, so you can kind of get a wah-like kind of, or an auto wah type thing going on with it. Um, really useful, a lot of different styles of music too. And if you combine that with that fuzz, you start stacking effects, you get into some very, very cool, synthetic, kind of useful sounds. And on that topic, a synthetic bass sound, I think the third pedal, very giggable, um, especially in 2019, a lot of guys use them, um, is an octave pedal. That's the MXR, uh, what is that, Bass Octave Deluxe, <laughs> forgot the name. 
And uh, that usually gives you one or two octaves down from your dry signal. If you're playing up above the 12th fret, you can add some kind of meat, some beef to that sound. Um, you can also take your dry signal totally out and get a very, very synthetic uh, kind of um, synth-like sound to that. Then combine that with, you know, you're stacking three very useful effects then because if you stack octave into, say, fuzz, you really do get that very synthy kind of tone. You add the envelope filter, uh, I would think kind of in the middle of those things, maybe after the fuzz, it, it, that's a whole other subject, where to put them in your chain. Uh, you really start to get into some super cool sounds that don't necessarily sound like a bass. You're still fulfilling that same role in music, but it sounds very synthetic, almost like key bass, which a lot of people request. You don't always have to have though, because you can get a lot of those sounds with stacking some pedals. So that's kind of an intro, what I think all bass players should get their hands on as far as effects to start out with. Just to recap, remember the looper, most important for you because practicing, super, super useful. Um, like, you know, just a lot, of, a lot of applications for that. And you can gig with it too if you, if you use it right. Try not to be super rhythmic with it. Fuzz or distortion or overdrive, something to kind of give that fuzzy sort of sound to it and to kind of sometimes give a tube emulated sort of vibe to your bass. Envelope filter for quote unquote funkier playing, although you can use it for a lot more than that. And last but not least, an octave pedal. Um, again, one or two octaves down, sometimes both, sometimes with your dry signal in there too. And stack all these together, have some fun, experiment, find out what sounds cool. You might use something, you might not use something. Um, and at this point you have entered the dark hole that is pedals and effects, um, one of my absolute favorite things to get into. So thanks for watching. If you got any questions, call me personally at the shop, 412-343-5299. You can check our inventory out at empiremusiconline.com. Please subscribe, like us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Instagram, and uh, we're here for anything you need. Thanks, guys.